Hello, Nihilus John here. What you are listening to now is a personal side project to the Hand in the Fire podcast. Let's call it tentatively John's Embers. Let's start with a bit of background so you can know where I'm coming from and a little bit more about why I might feel the way I do or um, why I might say some of the things I say in the main podcast. I am 28 years old as I record this. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Digital Media Studies, which is basically anything artsy-fartsy on the computer. I have a minor in Mandarin Chinese and a master's degree in Curriculum and Instruction, with a license to teach secondary school general sciences and a specialization on working with English second language learners. I'm not currently working in a school or classroom. I found that I didn't really like the school system. Um, but that's a little bit of my educational background. Um, it occurs to me, though, that I should mention that I am currently residing in Colorado, uh, in the United States of America, though I was born and raised in Georgia and retain a strong cultural connection to the South. Um, but moving on from a little bit of background to some more personal me kind of things. Um, I'm what I jokingly call a chronic academic. Uh, Basically, I'm addicted to learning things. I just really like um, listening or watching documentaries, trying my hand at learning new skills, or just sort of expanding my understanding of the world around me. Um, I like to joke about the fact that I, at one point in time, stayed up until 4 a.m., Uh, because I watched a documentary on the printing press and felt compelled to research and design my own. I was even texting my dad asking for help about how to uh, fix certain parts or whether or not he felt like this contraption would work. Um, I'm just that kind of guy. I really enjoy doing those sort of big mental problem stuff. Uh, I also have an affinity for crafts. Um, I greatly enjoy making things. I've taught myself to knit. I've taught a little, myself a little bit of uh, Irish uh, penny whistle. I'm trying to learn guitar, but having a little bit of problems with it. I like to cook. I like to sing. Uh, and I'm also a bit of an amateur blacksmith. Moving on to the philosophy stuff, though. Uh, you might have noticed I referred uh, to myself as Nihilist John. This is primarily to distinguish myself from the other John in the Hand in the Fire podcast. That John is sort of the ringleader of the whole group. He is um, myself, Joe, Matt, and Josh's um, friend that we all share. Um, I didn't actually know any of the other guys until uh, John introduced us all together. Um, But that aside, part of my own philosophy um, is that I don't uh, really like labels, I like to recognize the inherent complexity in some facets of life, and I feel like labels tend to be very limiting and oversimplify the nature of things. Um, I feel a little bit weird explaining that just because I feel like saying, oh, I don't like labels makes me sound like a hipster. Um, But I feel like my uh, understanding and explanation of why I don't really like single word labels is a bit more nuanced than your typical hipster will ever get into actually trying to uh, understand. Um, so with that being said, I will give myself the label of Nihilist John just to distinguish myself from the other John. Um, and it's not inaccurate to say that I am a Nihilist, um, but this doesn't but this does miss out on some nuance. Uh, I'm not a when everything is dark and nothing you do is meaningless, you might as well kill yourself, when kind of nihilist. Um, I don't really fit in with the emo and gothic crowd. Um, I find that that application of nihilism comes from a very shallow reading of the idea, and that if you actually look deeper into that idea, um, you end up in a much better place, provided that you treat that idea as a tool. Um, as opposed to just being sort of inherent truth of the universe, you know? So, what do we mean by nihilism? What does that word mean? 
Well, if you Google it, um, it is defined as the rejection of all religious and moral principles, often in the belief that life is meaningless, or extreme skepticism maintaining that nothing in the real world has a real existence. Now, I think you'll find that there are lots of things in the real world that have a real existence, or at the very least, it's very hard to disprove that they don't exist. Um, I encourage you, if you find some way to disprove the existence of a wall, I would love to hear about it. Um, so, first thing there, the rejection of all religious and moral principles, often in the belief that life is meaningless. So, with that in mind, the rejection of all religious and moral principles, I, I would say that I do reject all religious and moral principles that are being dictated to me by others. Um, I'm very much an introspective person, and I like to look inside myself. And one of the things that I do with nihilism is I use it as a tool to sort of wipe the slate clean so that I can then uh, self-determine and come up with my own ideas about uh, morality. Uh, the religious part, I'll talk about it another date, but essentially um, you could say that I'm agnostic, but again, one word label doesn't really get at exactly what I'm thinking about when I am saying I'm agnostic. Um, as far as morality goes, we'll get into that as well at another um, time. Um, if you really are dying to know, uh, the closest I can come up with would be contextual moral relativist. Um, if you don't know what those words mean, the internet exists for a reason. And again, I'll be talking about both of those in a later podcast. Getting back to nihilism, though. Um, if you must give me a label, um, besides optimistic, or besides uh, nihilist John, uh, I would say optimistic nihilism. Sort of gave it away earlier there. Um... There's a bunch of different kinds of nihilism. There's optimistic nihilism. There's existential nihilism. There is cosmic nihilism. Uh, there's a bunch of different kinds of nihilism that all have little nuances to them. Um, if you want a good um, sort of quick 101 on optimistic nihilism, I would recommend a video by a um, group called Kurskazgart sort of hard for me to pronounce. It's got a lot of G's and a Z right next to it. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description of the video uh, or in the description of the podcast if you're listening to this and not watching it on YouTube. Um, my thing with the optimistic nihilism, though, is even with that, it's not 100% um, accurate to how I view the universe. It's very, very close, but not 100%. The best thing I've been able to come up with is that I can break my understanding down into two key parts. Uh, the recursive application of the idea blank does not make, uh, does not matter. Um, and then the ability to self-determine as I've already mentioned. So first we're going to talk about that phrase blank does not matter because there's a lot of stuff tied up into that. When I say that something doesn't matter, I'm not saying that I don't care about that thing. Um, I don't view matter, uh, whether something has meaning or matters and uh, has purpose, as being um, the same as caring about something. I view meaning and my interest as two separate things. Uh, meaning and purpose and whether something matters typically is taken as an inherent trait of that object or that idea. And I don't really see that we live in a universe where that actually is the case. It's sort of weird to talk about, but I'm essentially saying that an imaginary principle of an object that is given to things by philosophers and by people as they go about their daily lives doesn't inherently exist. It's a made-up thing that people attribute to something, um, but it's not an objective principle of that object. I think that's pretty clear. 
Um, so with that in mind, um, I essentially see the world as being completely meaningless, the universe completely meaningless, but since I don't view meaning as nece necessary for me to have interest in something or to care about that thing, I'm still able to self-determine and find things that I care about. Let me see here, make sure I got all of my notes here. Oh, and the recursive part of all of that is that I like to apply the blank does not matter recursively. So this doesn't matter, so that doesn't matter, so this doesn't matter, and this doesn't matter, and the fact that you feel this way doesn't matter, and I don't care about you because that doesn't matter as well, and blah, 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 blah. On down the line, sort of like uh, turtles all the way down, if you get that reference. Um, so, we talked about things not mattering and how meaning is separate from interest or caring. So with all that out of the way, with nihilism to sort of wipe the slate clean, I'm now able to be introspective and sort of look inside myself and determine what I want, what I like, what I enjoy, um, without having to concern myself with social edicts, religious edicts, um, authoritarian edicts. I don't have to like things just because somebody tells me that I should. Um, I don't really concern myself with, oh, well, you're a guy, so you should like these things. Or, well, you're not a girl, so you shouldn't like these. Um, I don't really see those as valuable arguments. So with my nihilism in place, I'm able to just go, oh, well, I like that one, and I like that one. And I don't really feel like I have to justify that at all because... My interest is purely intrinsic. It's not determined based off of the rest of the universe at large. Um, some people will take that as saying that I am intrinsically creating my own meaning. But I would say that, again, my interest doesn't, per, uh, doesn't create meaning within the object. Because if we are to understand meaning and purpose as a characteristic intrinsic to that object, then it should have that meaning or purpose regardless whether or not I'm interested or care about it. And since I am saying that this idea of intrinsic meaning or um, purpose doesn't exist, then my interest or caring can't be based off that. Of course, all of this is um, precipitated or um, based off of how you differentiate between the words meaning and caring and purpose. Um, I'm obviously establishing specific definitions for those words that you may or may not agree with. Another issue that uh, I get a good bit is, well, then what drives you? If nothing matters, there's no purpose to the universe, why do anything at all? My answer is, I drive me. I get to decide what I want to do and when I want to do it and whether or not I like doing it and all of that fun stuff. That all becomes self-driven, um, which is at times very freeing, and at other times um, very anxiety-causing, um, because now the only excuse for why I don't do things is because, well, I didn't want to. And that can feel very shallow and very um, frustrating at times. Um, I feel like it is an aspect of lazy nihilists, though, that will use nihilism as an excuse to opt out of life, and by that, I'm referring to people that go, well, nothing means anything, so I'm just not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's just very limiting and very lazy. I don't feel like that's a really good understanding of nihilistic principles. 
because you're really only applying the nihilism on one level. Um, I would reply, well, the fact that it doesn't mean anything also doesn't mean anything. So if you ever want anything, you're going to have to self-determine and find out what it is you want and then figure out what you have to do in order to acquire that. Um, the nihilism isn't just there as an excuse for you to be a lazy asshole. Um, but essentially, with all of that, you also get people that use nihilism as a excuse for hedonism or an excuse to commit crime. And I would say that, again, I think those are very narrow, shallow um, readings of nihilism. If you really wanted to be accurate to how I'm portraying nihilism in this, um, essentially the logic would follow that life is not dependent on meaning. Um, and if it were, then that meaning would be knowable. Uh, since life isn't dependent on meaning, the rules of life are equally not dependent on meaning because if they had, if the rules had meaning, but life didn't, that would be very weird. I don't know exactly how that logic would work out. Um, since life doesn't have meaning, the rules have to inherently be meaningless as well because they can't be dependent on a meaning of life that doesn't exist. Um, so with that said, while the rules are meaningless and life is meaningless, that doesn't mean that we can disregard the rules because there are consequences for, the, for disregarding those rules. And it gets into a joke I often make where um, I say smart people don't commit crime because it's a hell of a lot easier to get the things from crime by playing the game than it is by trying to thwart the game and commit a crime in order to get it. Essentially, it's a lot easier to make money a monopoly by playing the game, and it's a lot more fun than it would be if you tried to steal money from the banker. Um, depending on who you're playing with, that could end up with you getting punched. So... Nihilism doesn't excuse you to be lazy and attempt to uh, exist outside of social rules um, because ultimately nihilism not only purges you from the obligations of a meaningful life, but it also purges you from the excuses to dissolve that meaningful life and dissolve all of the attachments that come with that. Um, if we're going to apply nihilism, we have to apply it in totality or not at all. It doesn't really work halfway. Okay. So... Now you know a little bit more um, about why I refer to myself as Nihilist John and why you will sometimes throughout the podcast hear people go, you're really happy for a Nihilist. Well, it's because I want to be because being sad sucks. Um, hope you enjoyed listening to me monologue and hope uh, maybe you found some of my ideas interesting. Um, maybe you have some contentions. If so, I'd love to hear them. Leave them in the comments below. Um, though, again, your opinions don't matter. Um, I am planning on doing another recording, uh, going over my ideas on religion and morality. Uh, I also want to do a small series on everyday philosophical lies. I currently work selling cameras for a living, and, at the, um, and I experience a lot of people exhibiting various philosophical misconceptions. And part of my own personal um, philosophical belief system is I like philosophy because of how it can help me unpack the world on my daily life. Um, I'm not one of these people that likes to study philosophers and use philosophy as a way for me to go, ha ha, I'm smarter than everyone else. 
I like it because it reveals things to me that I can then put to use on a daily basis. Um, so I think that kind of series could be very rewarding. Um, I'm also thinking about doing a quick little summary of each of our main podcasts so that those of you who struggle with the more freeform aspect of the podcasts will be able to look somewhere for a more structured explanation of the ideas that we bring up in those podcasts. Anyway, that's all I've got for now. Um, see you later.